I was raised in Williamsburg, Virginia. When I was about eight or nine years old, my father contracted a fever. It was not unknown to black people during that time, but it was rare. His fever lasted 11 years. Every Sunday, he would drag my sister and my brother and my mother and I to this spot on the outskirts of the town of Williamsburg. And we would sit patiently and watch as he dealt with this fever. My dad wanted to fly. My sister, my brother, and I would watch in awe as he took off in his Piper Cub or his Cessna to float in the air for an hour or so. Sometimes, as he practiced landing and takeoffs, he would flap his rudders to wave at us. In between takeoffs and landings, we'd go into the airport and buy Tom's peanuts or vanilla cream cookies, Coca-Colas or cheese crackers out of the vending machines while we waited. It always seemed like we had the airfield to ourselves. Very seldom did others come to fly. And I remember the cone-shaped wind vane that always seemed to be flying, letting the pilots know which way the wind was blowing. We went to all the air shows in the, or in the area uh, that I lived, and I watched in awe as pilots did loop the loops, flew upside down, stood on the wings of planes, and parachuted to the ground like it was just another day. They were my heroes. But my real hero was my dad. Because all of the air shows we went to had white pilots in them. My dad, who was a brick mason, took flying lessons at a time when he wasn't expected to do so by the white or black community. This was an expensive hobby, one more appropriate for a highly educated one and elite. He was black, lower class, uneducated by their standards, and a laborer. He was a brick mason all of his life. He did something most of those in my town didn't. None of my friend's fathers, any uh, other blacks in the town, even attempted to do it, but he did. And I was proud of him. From 1955 to 1966, he gave it his best shot. These are the treasures of which I speak. These are the kinds of stories that we should be trying to tell in our museum. The kinds of stories we are collecting as we speak on our website, the stories that connect to real people, stories that not only inform and affirm assumptions, but also stories that challenge, stories that uncover missed opportunities, stories that talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, but stories that offer hope and reconciliation and healing as well. As we um, enter a new um, era in our country, you know, my belief is that the museums that survive will be the ones we all can visit and see ourselves. When I started my first trek at the Smithsonian, my mother-in-law wanted to come along and visit to see my office. She didn't think that there was uh, 13, 14 Smithsonian museums. She thought there was one. So she came to DC saying, where's the Smithsonian? Well, I decided I should take her to at least the one that I worked at. So I took her to the Museum of American History. Well, Spencer Crew, one of, our, one of my colleagues, uh, did, and he was the, a director of the uh, uh, Museum of American History, had done an exhibition called Field to Factory. I'm sure some of you remember it. Well, at the beginning of the entrance to Field to Factory, on the left-hand side is a exhibition that really is covered by uh, a fence, the same kind of fencing that you put around a chicken coop. And inside the chicken coop fence, there were items and implements that you would put on a, a, a oxen or you'd put on a horse. My mother-in-law, because I decided I'd take her there was, because it was about black migration and, and rural life uh, in the South. So I thought I'd take her there because she indeed came from the rural South. Well, as I was taking her through, um, I passed by the chicken coop and I continued my walk, but my mother-in-law stopped. And she looked inside the fence and she said, Rex, do you know what that is? And I said, well, uh, yeah, well, isn't that something that you put on the horse? She said, yes, that's a Hames, she said, that you put on the horse. So you know what that is? I said, well, yeah, that looks like a plow. Yes, that's a 12-inch plow. Do you know what that is? I said, well, no. 
She went through and showed me every implement and, show, and told me about it. Then she began to talk about this horse by the name of Jasper, that she, every morning, got grain and picked the grain up and went, in to, um, uh, went out to the pasture to get the horse, and how she could plow just as good as any man could plow and how she, uh, her daddy, uh, uh, trusted her with the uh, horse more than he trusted anybody else with the horse, and how Jasper listened to her before, as I sat listening to my mother-in-law talk, all of a sudden I looked around me, and there were about four or five other people listening to her as well. As she began to talk to them, and she stopped for a minute, and said, hey, how you doing? And, and it, like, she was the, like she was the interpreter, like she was the docent. <laughs> And, and then she began talking to them, and they began talking to her. One happened to be from Kansas. One happened to be from Illinois. One happened to be from somewhere else uh, in, in the South. And they sat there talking to my mother-in-law about agriculture in their area. And she talked to them about agriculture in her area. We had at least 4,000 more square feet to see in the museum. <laughs> my mother-in-law stayed right there and listened to those people talking. Well, finally I tore her away after about 20 people sort of were surrounding her and the others who were talking about this. As we left the museum and headed back toward home, um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, what is she going to say to my wife? And, you know, is this going to be a good thing or a bad thing? She looked over at me and she said, it must be an interesting, fascinating time to be working in museums when you can go in there and see yourself. Well, I remembered that. Because that's the kind of stories I think we all want to tell. Those are the kinds of spaces I think we all want to in some way suggest. Stories that fit well.